We are in the heart of severe weather season, but sometimes we get so fixated on tornado threats that we often forget about how much more common and equally severe non-rotating thunderstorms can be. So we came to the University of Michigan wind tunnel to really show you the effects of high winds. Let's go inside. Okay, what you're gonna do, step into each one of those. Bring this up. So your arm will go through here. Flip these together. So you don't go down the wind tunnel. You ready? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, let's go. That's 30 miles an hour. It's gonna start to get a little uncomfortable in there. This is 40 miles an hour. I think this would be the speed where I would not be able to stand on my own two feet without this harness. Where, where are we at, Chris? 45 miles an hour. Yeah, I can't stand on my own. It's difficult to breathe. It's 70 miles an hour. Still increasing. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I need to pop my ears. How does my hair look? You did very well. <laughs> Actually, it was all stuck right to the top. <laughs> was yeah. How'd I do? You did great. Awesome. You're 75 miles an hour. When we're talking about wind gusts of sure. 70, 80 miles per hour, like sure. that's what we're, that would knock you off your feet. For right, sure. yep. Just like your body, there's a threshold for what buildings can withstand too. Dr. Seymour Spence teaches and studies the effects of high winds on infrastructure at the University of Michigan. Holes being start to get damaged at around 60 miles an hour. So anything above that is when we're expecting something bad could start to occur. This was the wind damage just last week in Beverly Hills, downing trees and power lines. And this past April, 65 mile per hour winds ripped roofs off of buildings in Ferndale. Ultimately, buildings will have direct wind damage due to pressures. The pressure can then build up enough to actually create a loss of a roof panel, a siding panel, then you can start to get internal pressurization, which can lead progressively to the entire loss, for example, of a roof on a, on a building. Are there any tips for people residentially to depressurize their home before a big severe weather event rolls through? Absolutely. The important thing is keep all your doors and windows and garages closed. You do not want any air coming into your building. What's gonna happen is if you have an open door or a window that's open, air gets in, Pressure builds up inside your building and then you start to get positive pressures trying to actually rip components off your building. So when you see storms on radar, they may start in a scattered nature, fueled by moisture in the environment. Now, sometimes those storms become linear and when they do, they're likely severe. The backside winds can become stronger than the winds ahead of the storms, forcing the line to bow out. Meteorologists refer to this as a bow echo on radar, which indicates the area of strongest wind. So let's translate what you see on radar compared to what you see at the surface. Located near a base of a thunderstorm is a shelf cloud. These are wedge shaped and typically associated with severe winds. This warmer and more humid air gets pushed above the cooler air, helping to develop the tall, ominous clouds that are associated with thunderstorms. Damaging winds occur when the storms are able to pull fast winds in the atmosphere down to the surface through a downdraft. When an area of wind damage extends more than 250 miles paired with gusts along the path at 58 miles per hour or greater, then you have a derecho. You may recall the Southern Great Lakes derecho in late May of 1998. From mid-Michigan to Metro Detroit, winds gusted up to 90 miles per hour. It was one of the worst windstorms in recorded history to move through the Great Lakes region, killing four people, injuring hundreds, and causing millions of dollars worth of damage in Michigan alone. 70% of derechos occur in the warm season, May through August, and about 90% of our convective warnings issued in Southeast Michigan have historically been for severe thunderstorms concerning damaging winds and or large hail as opposed to tornadoes. So the next time you brush off a severe thunderstorm warning, remember what 70 mile per hour winds look like. I'm Ashley Barrissey, Local 4.